just so you know, this is my actual Nintendo Switch collection here, so, yeah. What's up, Internet? Hope y'all are having a good day. So, uh, this whole YouTube situation, huh? Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, so... Uh, this whole thing... It's nothing new. Nintendo has been trying to take down things since Nintendo has been a thing. Back in the 80s and 90s, they were trying to take down, like, Blockbuster. You know, they didn't like people renting games. So they were trying to take down Blockbuster, and they tried to take legal action against it, and they realized they couldn't. I mean, look it up. There, it's, it's some fascinating stuff. Uh, they've been trying to take, take down emulators. Forever. By the way, this is just an unrelated uh, Mario Odyssey footage here. It's just some background. Give you something to look at while you're listening to my beautiful voice. Yeah, I know. Charming Arna. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Not saying I'm a user of emulation for piracy, but I have been using emulation for about as long as it's been a thing. I remember a very, very long time ago when I was a kid. It was like probably in middle school. And I found a... I found an emulator for the NES called Nestor. It completely blew my mind. Like, what am I gonna do? What? This had to be like in the early to mid 2000s when I found this. And, uh, it blew my mind. I was playing like Super Mario Brothers, uh, Mario 3, all on an old. It wasn't old at the time, but it was a. CRT computer monitor, it was like having an NES on my computer, and that was cool as shit. Mm, I do remember, you know, online there was a lot of controversy even back then about emulators and the legality of it. And this was around the time when uh, Nintendo didn't even bother uh, re-releasing any of these old games at all. Like, there was, like, no legal way to play Super Mario 3 other than to just have an NES or an SNES with the All-Stars collection. So, as far as I was concerned, if Nintendo didn't want my money, then whatever. It's not like, you know, I want to use emulation for any uh, nefarious purposes. I'm not sitting here twirling my mustache going, Take that, Nintendo. How dare you want money for the things that you make? No, not that at all. The thing is, I do, you know, I do have a physical cartridge of Mario Odyssey and an unmodded Switch and honestly I've been missing this game I've been wanting to get back into it for a while uh, I love Nintendo I wouldn't say I'm a Nintendo fanboy I'm not gonna sit here and defend whenever they start some bullshit But it seems to me, you know, they're very adamant on trying to 
uh, fight emulation and they've been for a very long time and any attempts that they make are small victories at best or like just delaying the inevitable another another youtuber uh who I won't mention, but you probably are aware of, if I mention this. This person has said, uh, he cut the head off a Hydra, three more heads will grow. And that's, that's just what I've been seeing all these years when it comes to this kind of thing. Nintendo trying to take down Dolphin Emulator. Nintendo taking down fan games, remember AM2R? Yeah, that did, they did a real good job taking down that game. There's no way in hell you can ever find or download that game ever again no matter how hard you Google. It's it's gone forever. Obviously. And it was all... I, I've noticed a trend with that kind of thing is whenever Nintendo decides to take down a fan game but Let's be real here. There's a shit ton of uh, Nintendo fan games, and they're not going away anytime soon. But it seems like Nintendo is mostly only concerned with the ones that uh, infringe upon whatever they're doing in that exact moment. Uh, there was a game. Yeah, they took down AM2R, basically. Because, uh... They were already making their own Metroid 2 remake. And when that released... <laughs> eh, it's alright. I never played it, but the consensus that I've heard from it is... It's alright. <clears throat> it, it, it's just funny to me whenever Nintendo decides they have a exceptionally small penis and they want the entire world to know about it. And when I say that, I don't mean like the entirety of Nintendo as a company and every single person working with them. Absolutely not. Especially not the people who actually make these games. I'm mostly talking about, like, uh, their legal team, whoever's in charge of putting the band hammer on whatever they feel like, and just reminding, reminding the entire world of just how astronomically small their penis is. <laughs> I mean... So, they're back at it again with the Kuzu emulator, that seems to be the big controversy, and I wouldn't be making this video right now if it weren't for that. But the thing is, yeah, emulation is often used for piracy, there's no, there's no way around that. And sometimes, someone like me wants to use an emulator, because it's easier to get game footage than it is to try and hook up my actual system to my computer. I'm not saying I'm doing that now. Mm -mm, no, th this is just unrelated footage you're seeing here. But, uh... You know, when I do use emulation, it's under a few pretenses. Number one, there's absolutely no other way to play this game other than to buy not just this game, but any game. Then to buy a physical cartridge from some retailer, from some reseller, who wants ridiculous amounts of money for. I'm not giving someone like thousands of dollars so I can play Little Samson on the NES. It ain't happening. I do like game collecting, but I, I, I draw the line at that kind of thing. 
No one's making money off of that except for the resellers. And, you know, it's getting ridiculous these days. Retro gaming used to be like, you know, oh, I can't, I can't afford uh, the new Xbox 360, so I'll just get a used original Xbox, because it's a whole lot cheaper. Man, I can't afford that new PS3. That's okay, because the PS2 is relatively cheap. And, you know, it's got San Andreas on it, so... Not a huge loss on my part. I don't know uh, what the going prices for PS2 games are these days. Since they're practically a dime a dozen, I would imagine they're not too ridiculous. But once we get a little bit older into like the Nintendo 64, Sega Genesis, stuff like that, Atari, then it becomes like this uh, hobby for rich people. And that just sort of pisses me off. And then, with this whole emulation thing, like, no, I, I don't feel like you should be a rich motherfucker to be able to play adventure on the Atari. Now, there are compilations, and I do really appreciate that. And I think that more game developers should make compilations of their older games. Hell, even Konami is doing that. I have the Castlevania collection on my Switch. You know. They know what they have. And they know they can still make money off of it. The Switch is nearing the end of its life. And I bought Mario Odyssey when it was brand new, when I had a lot of the uh, games that are going to end up being certified classics on the Switch whenever the new console comes out, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, I bought it, and it was brand new for me. My brother has that one, but he'll let me play it easily. Actually, I think I still have it in my possession now. Uh, whoops, whoops. Now, ignore any stuttering in the, uh, in the footage. That's my, uh, that's my capture. Yeah. I'm not entirely wrong there. But, uh, I just wanted to weigh in and give my two cents on this whole matter. I, I don't think emulation is going away anytime soon without some sort of uh, totalitarianism-ish measure measures. If that makes any sense. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm playing the game. Mm. Hold still. This game is still gorgeous, by the way. I think it's about time Nintendo lowers the prices of some of these games. You know, on the Wii U and on the 3DS, they took some of their more popular games and they lowered their prices to like 20 bucks. Branded them as Nintendo Selects or whatever, which was cool. 
it's like, oh, cool, I can play Mario 3D Land. And I don't have to sell a vital organ to do so. That's an exaggeration, obviously. Like, even when it was new, it was like 40 bucks. I don't know, I, I could say that it's Nintendo being greedy. I could say that it's a, you know, tiny penis issue. But, you know, these things are more complicated than that. They always are and they always have been. The thing is, you know, emulation's not going away anytime soon. To an extent, to an extent, I have a small amount of respect for people, companies, creators, wanting to protect their intellectual properties through the use of copyright. I still sort of consider it to be small penis energy, and take a shot every time I say penis in this video. <laughs> but the point I'm making is sometimes it just gets ridiculous. But you know how many uh, Mario fan games there are out there? And do you know how much money Nintendo is losing because of those Mario fan games? Fucking none. Absolutely none. If anything, those fan games just make people want to buy more Nintendo games. I would say that Nintendo is uh, behind the times when it comes to how gaming works in this game. But that may be. I do think that they have every right to try and protect their intellectual properties. As small penis energy as that might be, in my personal opinion. You know, if I create something, like say, you know, I was trying to get into indie development at one point, and I might still in the near future. But I made my own characters, I made a game that I made, and... Like, man, if I saw someone using my, uh, my characters, my sprite work, my music or whatever in their own project, I, I would be nothing but flattered. I will guarantee this. If I decide to make games in the future and I decide to start monetizing in some way here's what I'm gonna do you buy the game and you play it I know weird right such a novel concept you purchase something and you just have it like wow I must be crazy for thinking such a thing and What you're paying for is not some end user agreement. You're not paying for a license to play the game. You're just paying for the game. You can play it now. And hell, I'll, I'll even I'll even put it on the pirate bay myself. I don't give a shit. If someone likes my thing enough that they want to download and play it, whether they pay for it or not, that's amazing to me. And I am nothing but grateful for that kind of thing. I was thinking... I was actually thinking about this too, like, let's say, 
I redo Green Cherry, which is my game, and I make a version of it on Steam and whatever platforms I'm able to get it on. And then I make a specific Pirate Bay version. Or just post it on my own website or whatever. Put it on Game Jolt or Itch.io and be like, here, here's the full game pretty much. I mean, the paid version has a few extra features, but... Mostly it's just... You know what? Not even that. Not even that. Like, I, I, I was thinking it would be kind of cute to make, like, a pirate version, and the only difference is, like, the main character, Cherry Boy, is just wearing a pirate hat the whole game. And the game does, like, nothing to penalize you over it. And you can even, like, play through the game and unlock the ability to take the hat off. And then, on the reverse side, if you pay for the game, then you play through the game and beat the game, and you unlock the ability to get the pirate hat. And other hats as well. Just, you know, customization options. People like that. You can never go wrong with customization options. But I, I don't know, the point is, um... I'm not really trying to tell Nintendo what to do. I'm, I'm just me and they're them. And when it comes right down to it, Nintendo makes some quality stuff and deserve every bit of success they get. Now, I'm not saying that piracy is right. I do think in certain circumstances, you're better off just downloading something. But, uh, what was I saying? Wait. Without some, like, drastic measures, and I mean drastic measures, you're not gonna stop people from pirating. And the thing is, you can either go after the pirates, or, this is something I think about a lot, is Gabe Newell, you know, the Steam guy, uh, once famously said, if you want to beat the pirates, you give people a service that is better than what the pirates can give you. And that's what Steam is. Like, piracy was so rampant. But, you know, most people are willing to pay for video games as long as, you know, it's just that. No bullshit annoying DRM. I mean, there is a lot of DRM. Genovo thing. Genovo, however you pronounce it. No, that's it. And, oh, like, millions of dollars are spent on anti-piracy measures, and for what? to keep the game from being downloadable for like a week, if you're lucky. Just seems like, you know, that money could be better spent making better games. You know, just except that you have a tiny penis and that no one really cares unless you start waving it around in people's faces. That, that's my metaphor. 
That is my metaphor for this whole situation. Don't wave your tiny penis in people's faces. You will find that people are... Ah, damn. You know, for the most part, people respect that kind of thing. And most of the time, when it comes to piracy, uh, ninety-nine percent of the time, I find the only reason people pirate games is either because a they've already paid for it and they just want a more convenient way to play it. B, they can't pay for it, they're broke as shit, but still want to play a game. Of course, if you have a gaming computer capable of mostly running uh, Nintendo Switch pretty easily, not saying that I'm doing that. But, uh... then you're probably not broke. But situations change. For instance, I'm quite broke right now, but at one point or another I could afford a game PC, which is what I have here. And, you know, I try to take really good care of it, because I'm not going to be able to pay $1,500 for another gaming PC for quite a while. And I'm probably not going to be able to buy the new Nintendo system, the Switch 2, whatever you want to call it. Unless some miracle happens. Th things are tight these days. I'm not the only one. If you live in America, you know, things are, things are just tight. The only way you can succeed these days is if you were already succeeding to begin with, it seems. Or if you get extremely lucky and your YouTube channel blows up. Which I'm sort of hoping for, but I'm not, I'm not really putting all my eggs into that basket. You know, it's getting harder and harder for people to get a job. There's so many jobs in our nation right now, in the good old land of the free here, and they're all like minimum wage, and most there's too many people out there having to work multiple jobs just to make ends meet, just to keep food in the kitchen. Just to keep the lights on. It's getting stupid. And yeah, a lot of it is just like greedy corporations trying to nickel and dime people out of everything they have and not giving a single shit as to whether, you know, people are capable of actually living and thriving. I, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, mostly because our good old American education system sort of kind of teaches you not to care. I didn't expect to get very political in this video, but whatever. This is why, this is why this is a rant video. You know, it's got a generalized... <coughs> excuse me. A generalized theme to it. But, not much else. And, you know, these companies making money off of you, trying to get every single cent they can from you, 
they don't give a shit whether you live the next day as long as your last few pennies go to them. They don't give a shit whether you live or die. And they will make sure that you're absolutely struggling. But somehow entertainment is still relatively affordable. It's uh heard someone say it's the same thing as like, you know, the Roman Colosseum when you think about it. Sports, TV, movies, entertainment, a lot of it is just it's distractions. It's distractions to keep people from uh, focusing on the real issues. I'm not saying all of it is that. But, you know, the whole point of, like, the Roman Coliseum, from what I understand, was, you know, whenever the Roman Empire was up to some shady shit, here, have some entertainment. Don't focus on what we're doing. Look at people killing each other. Isn't that fun? Don't worry about it. We're just... We're just living in a more complicated, advanced version of that. Things change, but they're still the same. And, uh... I kind of can't feel for I'm using a Switch Pro controller here. Or an approximation of one, I should say. And the uh, so called HD Rumble is crap on this thing, so I just turned it off because it's more annoying than anything. But, I digress, that's not what, what I'm talking about here. Uh, shit, back to emulation. Um, it's not going away. It, it's never going away. Unless, like, life-threatening measures are taken. And even then, you know, once it starts going that far, you know, history will repeat itself, and there will be people who will lay their lives on the line for the sake of basic human rights and decency. I'm not saying piracy is a basic human right, I'm not saying it's worth dying for, but, you know, when when the guys up top with their small penises start waving it around and forcing people to see it, people are going to fight back. You know, just look at a history book. This video to be shorter, but whatever. It's called Rabid Rants for a reason. It's just silly to me. The whole copyright thing is just kind of silly to me.
Because it's like, what what is what is data on a computer really? It's a, you know, you got your hard drive, and that hard drive has a series of billions and billions of uh, switches that are either on or off. <laughs> ones and zeros, and that's what data is. And it's just silly to me that someone would be able to tell you which configuration of on and off switches your computer is allowed to have. You know, when you think about it that way, on the other hand, you know, creators who make works of art like this game have every right to make money off of it and if people find it worth spending money for then they will spend money on it. There is no reason for me to suspect that hypothetically if I was playing a downloaded and pirated copy of this game it would hurt Nintendo even in the slightest. And what's even funnier, what's even more messed up and funnier is, uh... The user emulation team is paying a settlement of like 2.4 million dollars to Nintendo. Which, uh... It's Nintendo. That's like... That's like couch change to them. That's like nothing. It just comes across to me as just petty. It's just like nothing money to them. That's, that's like a nice dinner somewhere for the weekend to them. I mean, Nintendo practically has enough money to buy Japan. So, making this little team... I, I, I don't know how much uh, money the user team has and what goes into making this thing later. But, uh... It can't be that much. And, yeah, the whole Patreon thing. That, I, I will... I will throw my stones completely in the other direction here and say that, uh... Asking people for money so that they can get more features from this emulator is... That, that's where they shot themselves in the foot. That's what happened. I mean, if they wanted to start a Patreon so that people who like the emulator can support it, that's fine. I don't mind that. But it's when you start locking features behind that paywall. Again, I'm not saying these people don't deserve to be compensated for their work. But, we're, we're dealing with a very, very gray area here. And, there's a lot of strong, strong feelings by some very powerful, powerful people. Who would very much rather you don't. So... In my opinion, it seems to me like if you want to do this, flying under the radar is probably the smartest thing you can do. You know, on the one hand, controversy brings attention to things which is why I'm making this video right now. But on the other hand, controversy brings attention to things. 
Get over here. Stop. Hey. Hold still. Ah, screw it. <laughs> when you're picking a fight against uh, a massive multi-billion dollar corporation like Nintendo, you're gonna probably lose, and it doesn't matter who's morally or even legally correct in this matter. Once you have enough big dick energy money to fling around everywhere, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, even asking for a Patreon support to begin with is pushing it. But like I said, like locking features behind that table, especially for an emulator for a game console that is still out there in stores, it's still being sold. It's one thing. It's one thing to have like a GameCube emulator on your computer. It's like who cares? Like Nintendo's not making any more money off of that at all. But with the Nintendo Switch, it just seems to me like maybe use a little tact if you're going to do something like this. Maybe try to fly under the radar a little more? I don't know. So, you know, gray area. On the one hand, uh, we, all know, we all know Nintendo's lawyers have tiny penises. And on the other hand, um, if you're doing legally questionable things. Maybe try not to draw too much attention to it. Ugh. Oh, I hope the audio on this video goes over well. I need a new microphone. I'll still do shut up and play content with, like, very minimal text commentary. But sometimes, sometimes I just want to get on and just talk for a bit and hope someone listens. Maybe likes the video and subscribes, but that's not really why I do it. It would be nice. And from what I've seen, uh, YouTube is gonna start making efforts to make smaller YouTubers. Like, they're gonna make more efforts so that smaller YouTubers have more of a chance to make some actual money. Which is nice. There are a lot of people out there who, you know, they put a lot of time and effort into their content and they deserve it. There was a, there was one YouTube channel I used to watch a lot of, called Agni Wolf Media, and they're known by Robot Co-op now, and essentially what they did was, uh, They played video games. They did other things. But they played video games. And they did sort of a Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of thing. Where they had like a dude and some robot puppets. 
in a shadowy form, like sit there and riff on the games or whatever. And it was genuinely good content that you could tell, you know, they put a whole lot of time and effort into. And they did it for the love of it. But as time went on, if you watched them like I did, you would notice that they were getting frustrated by the fact that YouTube was not uh, giving them the same uh, they weren't really being treated by YouTube as though they were putting that kind of uh, effort into their videos. And it's frustrating to see that kind of thing. But the truth is, you know, there's not some people, there's not some person up there at the top of YouTube Tower deeming what is worth money and what isn't. It's just, it's the algorithm mixed with, uh, you know, just what people want to watch or not. Let's see a little bit of this and that and everything. But it's frustrating to see, uh, what <laughs> bullshit reaction videos by some people putting, like, barely any effort into their videos at all and getting, like, hundreds of thousands of views versus people with, like, legit passion for what they do. Huh, I used to know how to get up here. Not like that. You know what, there's easier ways to do it. Sometimes banging your head against a brick wall is the only way to get past it. Sometimes you gotta step away from the brick wall and see if there's another way around it. It's another metaphor. You're, you're getting all kinds of metaphors. I, I love metaphors. I love metaphors. I will not stop at the opportunity to make one, or use one, or tell everyone that Nintendo has small penis energy. At least they earn it. At least they earn you know, they have shitty business practices, sure, but when it comes right down to it, they make good stuff. <laughs> when they put their minds to it and they say, this is the next big Mario game, this is the next big Zelda game, this is the one that, you know, people are going to talk about for years to come. They, they do it. They, they just do it. And I can compare them to Disney, because a lot of people, including myself, would say that Nintendo is comparable to being like the Disney of video game companies. Disney is not doing too good these days, and I'm not going to get into, uh, why? But I will say that uh, when corporate greed gets in the way of just making good stuff, people notice. You know, people notice pandering versus uh, genuine, you know, creation uh, content. Like, 
contrary to popular belief, people are capable of smelling bullshit pretty easily. And when Nintendo's serving up a nice big steaming plate of bullshit and telling you that it's a souffle, people are gonna notice. Let's go back to Nintendo. Let's go back to, uh... When Nintendo, with the Wii and the 3DS, they were getting complacent. And they were like, we're Nintendo. We're untouchable. Nothing can stop us. Let's make the fourth fucking new Super Mario Bros. game. Because, fuck it, people will buy it. I I'm sure it wasn't that cynical. But it was pretty cynical. And... I think those games are fine. It's just... You know... Mario Odyssey here was like... Not just a really good Mario game, but a statement by Nintendo saying, Alright, we hear you." And so is uh, Mario Wonder for that matter. Like, when you play Mario Wonder, I, me personally, I can't help but think of, uh... The fact that it is, uh, a game that is made to consciously, uh, address a lot of the problems people had with the earlier 2D Mario games. And... You know, let's look at the way Nintendo did it, versus the way Sega does it with, uh, with the Sonic series, because there are two completely polar opposite things going on here. Look at Sonic Forces. If you're a Sonic fan, then you know. I'm a Sonic fan, so... Naturally, I hate Sega and Sonic and everything you represent, obviously. <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, it is quite a roller coaster being a Sonic fan, I'll tell you that much. But when Nintendo tries to address a problem, like say their 2D games are getting too samey, they put genuine effort into it. And when Sega looks at a problem like Sonic's not selling, Sonic ain't popular like he used to be. They make Sonic Forces. And that game was basically just a bullet point presentation of all the things that they thought people wanted out of a Sonic game in the most bare bones, cynical, possible way they could do it. And, again, I have to emphasize the, uh, Not every person involved in the creation of such things is of the same mindset. You have to imagine there's hundreds, if not thousands, of people doing this. And there were a lot of people on the team who genuinely just wanted to make a good game. Ah, uh, you know. The gray area gets grayer. If that's even possible. You know, it's easy to just get online and complain and be like, no. Nintendo's being evil. Sega's being lazy. Here's one thing. I will actively turn off a YouTube video if I ever hear anyone say the words lazy game devs. Unless you're referring to like some Unity asset flip bullshit. I don't want to hear it. Because chances are, if 
a game or a port or whatever comes off as lazy, chances are it's not the dev's fault. It's probably the big wigs up top pulling all the strings. So, I don't want to hear it. I, I will click off your video the moment I hear those words. Hi, welcome to uh, Rabbit Guinea Pig where I make whatever I want. Including just random rants while I play Mario Odyssey on a emula- I mean, on legitimate Nintendo Switch hardware. I'm not usually the kind of person to, uh, do something out of spite. I'm not making this video out of spite. And I'm not even really making this video to make a point in particular. Because I find that something I've thought about a lot recently is, uh, within recent years, is not everything has to have, like, a solid point to it. Sometimes, you know, a video, a rant video on YouTube, a piece of art, a game, can touch on subjects. And it doesn't really need to try and make one solid point, but just open up discussion, I guess. Just like shine some light on the several different points and perspectives of a certain topic. So, no, this video is not emulation good Nintendo bad. We're, we're not doing that. This video is... It's complicated. I, I, I don't know. I think it would be easier, maybe not easier, but more worthwhile to just uh, hold the people who are doing the illegal shit accountable for the illegal shit they're doing, rather than the people who are making the tools that are used unlawfully to do illegal shit. If that makes any sense. It, it kind of goes back to like uh, when you go back to like the controversies of like parents getting mad at violent video games for being violent video games. And it's like, you know, maybe take some responsibility for what your kids are uh, being exposed to rather than getting mad at those things themselves for existing. It, it, it's the same energy. It's the same concept. Um, you know. It's just easier for people to scapegoat one thing rather than try and deal with the problem at its source. Rock and roll music is not corrupting your kids. 
Mortal Kombat is not a murder simulator. Emulators are not made specifically so that people can pirate video games at their leisure. It, it's, it's always a whole lot more complicated. And it just annoys me because I've, I've seen it my whole life. Is people like to go through extreme measures to oversimplify problems. Try and get rid of the source of problems without really fully understanding what the source even is. If that makes any sense. Why, thank you, Cappy. Anyway. I could go on and on and on. I already have. I'm gonna end it here. Hopefully I said something of value. If not, whatever. I'll just keep making the kinds of videos I like to make. Sometimes they're just gameplay videos, sometimes it's like showing off something cool. Sometimes it's a rant like this one. And you don't have to watch any of it. That's fine by me. I'm just doing it for fun. Sometimes I get a little over serious like I just did. And I'm not I'm not cutting it, I'm not hitting it. <sighs> anyway, you heard that Skype sound, that's my friend. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right now. Thank you for watching, if you did, and hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, or don't. It's up to you. I'm not gonna force you. I'm not gonna bully you. I'm certainly not gonna beg. What really annoys me is when people front load that shit in their videos. Like, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Like, dude, I have to actually like your video first before I want to like it, okay? Remember when that word actually meant something? Yeah, old man rabbit on his front yard shaking a stick at the kids, huh? Alright, well, anyway, thanks for watching.